What up guys, welcome to another RMA5 quick tip. Um, today I want to show you um, how to create advected particles to a pyro simulation. So let's start on a geo and um, let's do uh, pyro configure billowy smoke. And the pyro configure billowy smoke is going to give us this. So off the bat, it's gonna give us a pretty, pretty cool simulation. We just create a folder for this, and this is gonna be our our section. All right, let's hit B on the viewport, the background, and let's set this to dark. And uh, let's hit play again. Cool. So we got we got our pyro, right? And uh, sometimes it's good to drop just a light. Because uh, it, it might help visualize what's up, what's going on in the scene when you have pyro stuff. Uh, for the sake of what we're doing here, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, a couple of things that you want to have in mind, like uh, you have the 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 source, the pyro source here, which is being initialized by a volume scatter, so it's basically scattering. Uh, points onto your torus. Um, the effect, just the vector velocity. This is creating the velocity on the y. Um, this one right here is rasterizing the attributes, so it's rasterizing density, temperature, and velocity, which is created here. Then on the pyro solar, you can tweak a few of the parameters. The voxel size is going to determine the resolution. The fields is going to control the dissipation, so how fast it disappears. And the shape has a buoyancy of pushing upwards, a little bit of wind, that's why it goes this way. And disturbance, turbulence. So you feel free to play with this if you wanted to have a different thing. And the pyro look is basically what's going to... You can kind of like tweak it here if you were to want to render it or something. Um, but this is not the case for what we are doing today. What we want to do is... We're gonna we're gonna change this to out oops. out pyro. Then we can use any source we want, but I'm gonna use this source, the pyro smoke source, because it it's here. So it's gonna what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna use the the pyro to push the particles around. So we're gonna do pop. You can do um, uh, volume. Mm, hold on, scatter. You can scatter some points onto it, or a points from volume. Sorry, I had a brain fart. So now we have some points scattered, we're going to drop down a pop network. We're going to connect the points to the pop net. We're going to come into the pop net. We're going to say here we want all of the points, which is the ones that we just connected. So if we go back, we should now see the points there. And now what we want to do is we can delete this. We want to use a pop at the volume. So we drop this, you can say either second context geometry or we can select it manually here out of pyro and there's a couple of different things that that you can play with here uh, off the bat here's what you will get so it goes slower here because of course that's the part of the pyro simulation is not cached let's go ahead and cache it so it's a little bit easier to work with so we're going to do a file cache Drop that right here. And name this pyro. Let's 
And let's uh, let's go ahead and cache it, and uh, we'll be right back. Oh, caches. All right, guys, we're back. We have the pyro simulation. Now we'll we'll out see what we can do with it. So uh, for our first things, like we're just updating the base of the force, um, and this is what we get. Now we can actually make it more accurate. So we do update by velocity. I actually like updating by velocity a little better. See, okay. Um, a couple of nicer results. And of course, like right now, we're not killing any of the partners, right? So we could come in here and do like give them a life variation of 1 and 0.5 or something so that they die and they are not like hanging around there doing nothing you know um a few other things our source isn't super interesting but anyway um let's see our pyro here So we can we can let it live a little bit longer. Um, remember that the life of the pyro is based on um, the dissipation that we tweet. So that's that, and then you can change you can change a few other things here. Uh, blend. So this is gonna blend between what is and isn't affected, and then you can also do trace if you want it to like really really um, like follow it uh, closely. <clears throat> All right, so let's check it out. This is gonna be much closer to the original. something here okay never mind um, all right so so that's that and then what we can do now is merge it with the pyro. Hit D, make it black. You can see that now your particles are really, really following uh, what the what the pyro is doing. So this is a, a helpful tip if you wanted to have like little bits and dusts flying when you have like a pyro simulation just for the sake of demonstration I'm just gonna do uh, attribute randomize and let's just randomize the p-scale let's just do boxes Scale. So, so you can see I would do something like that, or like another thing instead of using a uniform, you can use a um, custom ramp and then just control your scale based on this one, uh, based on this ramp.
so that you can get more variation. Right, and then uh, maybe we do like three here. Let's merge this with our small, and then, and then yeah, you can see that. I mean, the use for this is there's so many, so many interesting things that you can do with something like this uh, in production and. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys like this quick tip and uh, we'll be back with more.